We'll begin in uh, the book of Job, <clears throat> chapter 1, and verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and says, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made a hedge about him, about his house, about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Here is God talking to the devil and inviting him to see the uprightness of Job. Because the devil isn't upright. He's not upright at all. So here is God challenging him and saying, you know, you're this angel that wouldn't do your job and cover Christ as a human being, but you will not obey God. And yet here is this man, Job. Here is this man, Job, who is my servant and who is upright in heart. In Job 3 and 17, it says, There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. That's talking about the grave. That's the place where the wicked cease from troubling others, is in the grave. In Lamentations 5 and 5, our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. This is about those that are upright. Those that the Lord has put Christ, the righteousness of Christ in. The upright in heart, the ones that seek him. Because scripture says that none of us, None of us naturally seek him. And the church today has um, so much error and so much heresy that we don't preach on sin. We don't warn people how evil, how deeply evil sin is and what a great offense it is to God. And what a great offense they are, we are, to God apart from the atonement. Of Jesus Christ apart from being saved right now we are in very perilous times times where people are very uncertain about how the future is going to be and we're all feeling it but here is this moment in time where God also has been trying his saints Judgment begins at the house of the Lord, but the testing of the saints. The devil wants to wear us out, but God wants to purify us, to make us stronger, to make us have less leaven in us, so there's less place for the devil, and no place really, for the devil to get a foothold. Because Jesus says that towards uh, in John 17 in uh, John chapter 17 he speaks about this about how the devil has come at him but he's found nothing in him the God of this world has found nothing in him and this is where Jesus is bringing his saints right now this is the great separation and the great divide and we will be seeing that divide getting greater and greater as the Lord is sifting out the church. Uh, in Hebrews, Hebrews 4, 9 to 16, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. A rest, okay? 
For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. This is the day when we realize that we cannot govern our own salvation. We have no hope apart from the grace of God to be saved at all, to be recognized in heaven at all. And time is short, and now is the time to settle accounts with God. And it is hard work, and we don't want to do it. The natural man in us is inclined to worry and is inclined to just hang on for dear life and want to control the outcome. But the outcome, the increase, is always the Lord's. All outcomes are in His hands, and all that we can do is come as beggars and children and say, Lord, I cannot handle this. I cannot fix this. I am not God, you are. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, for he that is entered into his rest has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Of the joints and marrow, it's a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God cuts through all of the lies, all of the deceit, all of the wickedness. Right now, people are waking up and saying, wait a minute. My whole life has been a lie. Everything they taught me from the time I was a baby has been a lie. How do I reconcile that now that I see things getting scarier and scarier? And I know my heart's not right. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, meaning God knows exactly what's in your heart, so don't kid yourself. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do, seeing then that we have such a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but in all points he was tempted like as we are yet without sin. Because he was tempted like we are, not only does he understand it, but he's with us in it, and he's endured it for us, so that we need only look to him in all of it, and come, therefore, boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Ephesians 2 8 and 9 is the same theme where, where we are saying, For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourself. It's a gift. Faith is a gift. Salvation is a gift. Grace is a gift. Not of works, lest any man should boast. If any of us today still think that we can control the mess that we are in, we are severely deceived and we should be waking up by now. True church, please wake up. Please wake up. Here in Mark 6 and 52, they've been on the sea. They're afraid there's a storm. And yet in verse 52 it says, For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. I woke up to that this morning. Uh, I always have scripture playing beside my bed, and, and that's what I heard. They considered not the miracles of the loaves. I, and I thought, how many times, Lord, have I seen you work? How many places have you walked me through? And yet, when the devil comes in like a flood, I consider not 
the miracle of the loaves. I am no different than the apostles. I am no different than anyone in this book that struggles with something. And this is why this truth is so important. God has given us not just absolute truth, but he's given us a panorama of people and characters and stories and incidences so that we can look at ourselves and find ourselves in our shortcomings but also find ourselves in God receiving us back. In Job, um, verse four, or chapter 40, sorry, Starting at verse 3, then Job answered the Lord. He said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? Because God has said in, in verse 2, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. So he's turning to Job, and he's saying, I've heard your, your, your complaint against me, I've heard your complaint against me. But shall you contend with me and instruct me? Shall you reprove me? Behold, I am vile, Job says. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer ye twice. But I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Look on everyone that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Here's the crux of it. God, in his mercy, endures our complaint because he knows that we are pitiful and we cannot save ourselves. We are lost. We are broken. We are sinful. We are wrong. We are deceived and we are sold out against God. And yet he is merciful enough to let us pour out our complaint and then look at us and say, Will you question me when your own right hand can't save you? Then Job answers the Lord in 42, 1-6. And says, I know thou can do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. It's a time for the church to come to repentance, like Job has. For years, we've seen false doctrine being peddled like crazy. And people are angry because they have been promised the moon from false prophets. And we keep looking at things and saying, well, why isn't it getting better? Why don't I have these continuous blessings? Why, if God loves me, are things not adding up and going together? But see, the thing is, we don't recognize that God is more interested in our lost and broken soul and the depravity that we are living in 
and our inability to save ourselves than he is about us having some blessing in time. He's a good father. And a good father doesn't hand you something false. But a good father makes sure that you're ready. In the coming days, as the Antichrist spirit rises, and when the Antichrist appears upon the earth, it will be very hard for people to discern. If we are not clean, if we are not made pure, if our hearts haven't been tested as Job's heart's been tested, so that Job shows by the end, God and Job together, what it is to be saved truly safe because at some point he cries out for the intercessor and he understands that he needs an atonement. And he was an upright man, but he understood his need for atonement and for God. And we have to get to the point where we stop believing the lies that have been peddled to us and understand our need for God and be willing to do the work, to be ready, so that when the other stuff comes, we're clear of it. That's what God's seeking right now for his people. He's saying, come out of her, get delivered from it. He will purify the sons of Levi. He is a refiner's fire. He is a fuller soap. We need to learn to submit, because at the end of the day, the bride of Christ is expected to be a submitted bride to her Lord, and not rebellious and whoring and in witchcraft like those who are in the Antichrist. The Lord bless you. That's all I got.